delved into the theme of independence and its many implications in Latin America. But what does it really mean to be an independent state? In our world, we often consider an independent country to be a country in which its residents have some sort of self-governance, sovereignty. And we often associate independence with a sort of liberty, equality, and just general pursuit of happiness. Today, with the help of some of my friends, we're going to explore some of these movements for independence in Latin America, the key figures in these movements, and finally, to what extent does independence in Latin America uh, have, a, have an impact in contemporary society today? So let's go check it out. Let's go, let's go find Melissa. Hi, Jorge. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Um, so one of the reasons that actually led to the independence in Latin America were the Bourbon reforms. These were economical and political reforms promoted by the Spanish crown, and they were uh, together with really aggressive and effective tax collections. And this really limited the power that Creoles had in Latin America. On the other hand, we also know that this period overlaps the time in which Napoleon invaded Spain and that really destroyed the Spanish administration in Latin America at the time. As well, we know that Creoles were tired of having a monopoly and having to give all of their profits only to the Spanish crown. So all of this just led to a revolution in what is Latin America at the time. All right, thanks, Melissa. So uh, we talked a little bit about what caused this independence, but uh, what about the key figures? So any, any good historical story has, has some some heroes and some protagonists. So let's go over to Tavi, see what, see what she says about some of the, the key liberators in Latin American history. Hi, Jorge. So today I'm only going to be talking about Jose Mar Mar Matias Delgado. And so he basically fought for the independent movement in El Salvador and a bit of Guatemala. So basically what happened is that in, in 1811, he, uh, he fought for the movement of independence. And so him, along with his nephew, um, he, they they issued a, a cry of independence. And so in 1813, he became the uh, chief deputy or a provincial deputy in the Guatemalan city. And then later on in 1821, he became elected the governor of, um, of El Sal San Salvador. So at, actually, him as a figure, he's very important as he actually liberated quite a few countries and fought really hard for the independence of these countries. And that's what makes him a key figure. And until today, he is seen in El Salvador as well as other different Latin American countries as one of a very heroic figure as he fought really, really hard and he fought the Spanish role. So, yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay, so let's go over to Karen and see, see what other kind of figures we got in Latin American independence. Hello. I'm going to talk about Simón Bolívar. Simón Bolívar was very important for Latin American independence, especially for the countries in the New Granada, like Venezuela, Colombia, Bolívar, Ecuador. And yeah, so he was very important because he was part of a lot of political movements as well as military movements. And um, yeah, he was really involved in the idea of uniting Latin America, especially the Nueva Granada. Um, he's now a very important influence for all the political movements, not directly, but their basis. And he diagnosed most of Latin Americans' problems, and he made explicit the need of, the cre of creating local and national institutions. Most importantly, he claimed the ideals of personal freedom and solidarity with Latin America, and the motivation that what, what of what was to come. All right. Thanks, Karen. There's another hero. So let's go all the way down to Adrian. I think he's somewhere over here. What's up, man? Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian. I'm going to talk to you. Well, first, first, I'm from Mexico, from Monterrey, from the north. I'm going to talk to you about the independence of Mexico. The independence of Mexico started with Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla. He was a leader. He was a priest. He was very important during the 18th century when it starts in the 1810 in Mexico, where it started in Hidalgo, right now, today, the state of Guanajuato. I'm going to show you a little bit. Let's go check out the map. It started here in the center of the country. It's near from Mexico City, and my, my, my state is on the north. So it was like very important movement because it was in the center of the country. And I need to say that the main reason of the independence in Mexico, it was a rebellion against the Spanish crown because there were about three, 300,000 of people that were living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And this was, Miguel Hidalgo Costilla was not the only leader. It was also Morelos. He was very important. But I want to focus first 
in Hidalgo because he was the one who started everything. Okay. All right. Thank sweet. You. So let's go. Let's go down here with everybody. So we talked a bit about the key figures and the causes, but what do you guys think now? And how has contemporary society? So we'll start over here. How? What do you think? How how has Latin American independence uh, impacted today's world and today's Latin America? Well, like for for me, like as a Colombian, I can see how how the ideal of solidarity and unity is come in place when when you actually are not in Latin America. Like I, I feel that this sense of unity and um, pertinence, I don't know. Uh, comes when you miss home and comes when you realize how wonderful and how productive could Latin American be and how how many resources they have and yeah how great can could it be that all the countries could be united and could support each other in like economic um, alliances or political alliances and yeah it could be it could it could be a potential growth for the future but it's still very different since we have a lot of um, yeah, differences between each other. All right, sweet. So, what do you what do you guys think over here? What about you, Patty? Well, I can't speak for every Mexican, although I am from Mexico City. But I do know that that I do know that I, the independence so far hasn't really backfired. I mean, it's funny because some people really truly embrace that being a descendant of a Spaniard, but other people really don't like it being called a Spaniard. But obviously, you can see the influences in a lot of things: the architecture, the food, the language. But you do have a lot of like this still a lot of the modern technology coming in. All right, Melissa, what do you think? Well, uh, something that I will always keep in mind is the dream that Simon Bolivar had to see all the nations united. And this is something that I clearly see in Central America, for example, which gained independence in 1821. However, they just separated after that time. And it's not very pleasing for me as a Central America to see these regions uh, separate themselves, even politically and socially. They don't really agree on many issues. So I would have the same dream that he had of seeing this region united again. Well, finally, I, I want to say that every Mexican in, in Mexico from the 31 states, we're very proud that we don't, we right now we can work without this without Spain because thanks to Spain is that right now many Mexicans are living in a better they have a better life. Not everyone because poverty it's also a problem in Mexico, but thanks to independence is that we are free. All right. Thanks guys. I hope you guys learned some stuff today. Los tiempos del cólera, mi hermano. El sol que nace y el día que muere con los mejores atardeceres. Hoy el desarrollo en carne viva.